So, if the journalists are right, then something is about to hit the fan with the release of the Chilcot Report on the 6th of July. But what actually is the Chilcot Report and why should you care? As we're all aware, the British government under the supervision of then Prime Minister Tony Blair joined forces with the US government in order to invade Iraq in 2003. A conflict that resulted in the deaths of many British soldiers and Iraqi civilians. The invasion and occupation of Iraq was spurred on by President Bush's government asserting that Saddam Hussein could be linked to the terrorist organisation Al-Qaeda and was in possession of weapons of mass destruction. Which, as it turned out, he was not. In 2009, when Blair stepped down and was replaced by Gordon Brown as Prime Minister, an inquiry was launched into Britain's involvement in Iraq from 2001 to 2009. An inquiry which was headed up by Sir John Chilcott. Almost seven years later, and the reported findings of this inquiry are to be launched. The inquiry was initially planned to be confidential, but due to public pressure, it was conducted predominantly in public and will be widely available after its release. It will, however, be longer than all of the Harry Potter books put together, so most of us might only want to read the official summary and keep up to date with what's going on in the press. There are many potential repercussions of this report. Although intended to be a learning exercise for future governments, the report will reveal any potential mistakes that were made by Blair and his parliament during the run-up to and the conflict in Iraq. It will also most likely have a role to play in the Labour Party as a whole. When Jeremy Corbyn was elected leader of the Labour Party in 2015, he made plans to make a public apology on behalf of the Labour Party for the Iraq War, but was asked by fellow MPs to wait until after the Chilcot report was released. Really though, what will come out after the Chilcot report's release is uncertain, but presumably it will be pretty substantial given that the report itself has cost over £10 million. We will see.